Hello, 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 Green Owls, Dee Dee here. Um, so I have my three dogs in here with me, so they may get a little rowdy. Um, we have Sears coming to fix the washing machine, which uh, won't uh, power off. <laughs> Alright, so we have Ripper, we have a package, we are unboxing. Zip. Okay, this is an indie deck, um, self-published, and I first saw this last October on Chris's channel. This is the Hirohita deck, uh, Danny Hirohita um, out of the U.S. here. This is a custom hand-drawn piece. He draws on everything. And each one of these unboxings I've seen, uh, a mystical um, mommy, mammy, uh, mystical mommy from uh, YouTube did a really great walkthrough of this deck. Is that the Hirohita deck? And we have a skeletal figure under, looks like under a huge sombrero. All right, um, so let's try to get into this without sacrificing the image. And in Chris's video, which I will try to remember to link below, um, the deck was um, banded. I, the packaging on this deck has been improving. The creator is taking the feedback, I think, from the community and is improving his packaging. Because um, my deck is soloed and wrapped. And so that... Um, responsiveness to the community's desires is, is noted. Okay. As far as I'm going to go. So these are the backs and these are shrink wrapped. Desellowed. This is the Hirohita tarot deck, and um, Danny Hirohita, out of the U.S., is the creator. Um, this is a pip deck, um, which I don't mind at all. Uh, a flexible cardstock, um, white core. look at size. So size-wise, oops, compared to a steampunk tarot mass, mass market, it's a little shorter. Or, it's a little longer, sorry. But the same width. The borders are basically the same. Let's look at the thickness of the two decks. In this case, the thickness is pretty much identical to the mass market, so if you know what the steampunk or the green witch or the modern spellcasters, those tarot decks, what their cardstock is like, that's what this is like. Alright, so we have a, I'm going to, almost reversible. 
where it de the all of this part and this part and these outer um, swir 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 swirls and such are, are reversible. But on the eye, you have dots on one part and rays on the other. Other than that, which is basically sun and moon, right? Sun and moon. That's what I see. Uh, the design is reversible. Okay. Um, I've been interrupted a ton. This is the Hirohita Tarot deck. It is an indie published deck, graphic novel style. Here is the Fool. And we've got a uh, six shooter, long guns. And here we have the Magician. Chakras. Cup, gun. Blade and staff. Um, here we have the High Priestess, but she's been gored by this tusk. And we have a reflection. Empress. This earthly divine is what uh, sold me. I mean, come on. And we have the Emperor. We've got a crown. We've got a halo effect. This is stunning. So much going on. Hierophant. So she's got a cigarette lit here and maybe like a rattle or something and um, the smoke is coming up and kind of uh, manifesting this spirit up here and it scared everybody else kind of away and they're they're moving away. That's what I see. Uh, the lovers. We have the pious and then the enraptured. It almost looks like a Don Quixote type character, maybe. Um, and this Venus de Milo kind of, um, yeah, it's very. Very cool. <sighs> the chariot. Legions of kind of like um, bast figurines in black and white. Egyptian feel. Then this Greco-Roman kind of skirted warrior with a lion like Julius Caesar coming to conquer Egypt and we have tanks coming out of the background very cool there we have strength um, we have a shrouded figure no face um, this is a uh, Lion, scorpion, chimera? There's there's a mythical beast that is scorpion tailed and lion bodied. But yet this is not a lion head. I don't know, this is a mythical beast. And an enshrouded strength card. The hermit. So this is an alien on earth taking plant samples. There's like a first explore checking to kind of see what we're all about. 
Uh, we have the Wheel of Fortune, we have a roulette wheel, we have kind of these alien zombie faces, we've got dice going on, even though it's a roulette wheel so dice doesn't really make sense. And we got a cigarette girl in the back. Justice. And we have a samurai warrior. Um, gutting himself for failing. And Justice is indifferent. Um, just waiting for it to be done. have somebody underwater instead of hanging from a tree they're underwater kind of looks like they're drowning we've got some runic symbols up here those will be fun to look into death card Pluto Scorpio I've got a skeletal horse with a Mexican army figure, revolutionary figure. Zapata? Is that what Zapata's people look like? Temprano, Key 14. We have a tiger or a liger, maybe, but probably a tiger. And we've got a martini shaker. Very colorful, some kind of Asian shrine, Southeast Asian. Uh, the devil, we have a half skeletal, half zombie skeletal construct with some monstrous figures in service to him. The tower, the tower is alive and has arisen. star some priestess a priest shaman we have an underwater beastie under the water with the moonshine Sun. We have a serpent beast and a skeletal figure. Uh, this looks very much like, see we have Pluto, Judgment, Uh, looks like a New Orleans style funeral, maybe. <clears throat> and then we have the world card being judged, actually. We've got uh, meteorites or bombs coming in. Looks like meteorites to land on the cityscape below. There's like a robotic drone watching everything happen. Hmm. Those are the trump cards. Very cool. Very cool. 
I will be right back with the miners. Okay, I am back. I have pulled out the wands and the cups um, from this deck. So we have or the aces and the courts, wands and cups. Aces and, and courts from this deck. So we have the ace of wands here, swords, cups, which the cup looks a little bit like a rib cage, and ace of pentacles, which is a looks like an astronaut constellations looking back at the earth from the moon. We have the kings. We have Archangel Michael. A king of swords. King of cups. And a king of pentacles. Completely different. Very interesting. We go to the queens. We have Queen of Wands with purple cats. <laughs> a Queen of Swords, very badass. A Queen of Cups, kind of emotional, deep, contemplative, soothing. And a Queen of Pentacles. This is a snake woman. It's a snake woman. Yee. The Queen of Wands is gorgeous. And we have the Knights. We have Mounted Knight of Wands. Mounted Knight of Swords. Although you don't really see the mount, you see the horn of the saddle. You have the King of Cups, which looks a cross between a scarecrow and a knight in full armor. And you have the Knight of Pentacles, which is somebody with a anvil for a head. interruptions but the dogs are out of the room page of wands page of swords a fencer page of cups Cup has an axe on it. And Page of Pentacles. So those are the courts and the aces. Now we're going to look at the pips but I'm going to compare and look up the I Ching symbols so we're going to stop here and I will resume after I do that because not I Ching the I Ching symbols are something that I'm still working on very very sporadically so we have pips that look like this Pips that look like this, swords, pence, and the heart is the background, mended heart for the cups. We'll be back. Okay, hello Green Owls. This is a continuation of the unboxing and flip through of the Hirohita 
tarot deck. Um, and I wanted to look specifically at the I Ching symbols. Um, and over there I have the book for this deck open uh, as a PDF. And so I'll be going through that and see if I agree with the uh, correspondences for the hexagrams. Alright, so this is the Ten of Wands. This is a pip and the setting is the same except for the count. So we have the Ten of Wands and the I Ching symbol is down here. And this symbol is the 28th hexagram and it corresponds to excess. Um, so an excess of control on others or oppression. I can see that association. Nine of Wands is the hexagram 47 which is according to the author's book oppression um, so I'm not sure if I agree with the correspondence of not having ten of wands keyword oppression and nine of wands keyword excess. So I would have to look at that. I'm not sure if I agree there. We have the Eight of Wands and the hexagram, 35, 35th hexagram for progress. Eight of Wands, I, I agree. Seven of Wands, 33 third hexagram for retreat. So seven of wands is about um, protecting your position, defending yourself. Six of wands is a victory and so this is the 63rd. Okay. Uh, I had to take a phone call, so I'm back. I've got the Six of Wands, and the hexagram is the 63rd, Completion, or Competition, sorry, Competition, um, and Six of Wands is about victory and succeeding, so competition, uh, kind of. Five of Wands. He, he did not put a uh, hexagram correspondence in. Now we go to Four of Wands. And the 22nd hexagram, Adornment and Grace. So Four of Wands, it's a balance, it's a party. Joie de vivre, uh, uh, maybe. Three of Wands. Contemplation. Hexagram 20. Three of Wands. Contemplation. Two of Wands, Breakthrough, a resolute, being resolute, the 43rd hexagram. So, Dominion in one case. And then we go to the Swords. This is the Ten of Swords. Spinning through the book. Ten of Swords, this is the 18th hexagram. Arresting or stopping decay. So if you're going to stop decay, I guess we are all decaying until we're dead, and then we go from decay to putrefaction. 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the hexagrams for the most part. Nine, he has no correspondence. Eight, stopping movement. Eight of Swords is about boundaries and being held up, so I get that. Seven of Swords, hexagram 44, so this was hexagram 39. Hexagram 44, encountering and overcoming or meeting temptation head on. And Seven of Swords is about the sneaky sneak card. Six of Swords. Uh, he has the third hexagram, which is difficulties. And so the Six of Swords is about leaving something behind and moving on. So that could be the similar initial difficulty. Five of Swords hexagram is uh, the sixth hexagram, conflict. Five of Swords, that's appropriate. Four of Swords. Ninth hexagram, the taming force. So this is about rest and truce, peace and quiet, taming force. I can do that. Three of Swords. He has this as the 23rd hexagram, which is about falling apart. And you see in the background, all of the hexagrams are of the repeating pattern in the background. I just actually noticed that. So falling apart, two of swords. He associates with the hexagram 38th hexagram, which is antithesis, cross purposes, being out of union. And that's kind of what two of swords is about. Two sides. And then this is, you know, I was excited about the hexagrams, and then I noticed that the other two suits, no hexagrams on the cards. So there's a slightly slight variation in the background of the pentacles. Um, standard pips. Um, He does have I Ching associations, though. Like for Three of Pentacles, he has key nine, or hexagram 19 in the book, which is Approach. Four of Pents, he has hexagram 60, Restrain. Five of Pents, he has the hexagram for sun, uh, which keywords are decrease. Six of pence, which is about charity and um, generosity. He has this key 27, which is about nourishment. Seven, the hexagram five, which is about waiting. So, the book has hexagram uh, associations. The cards for half of the pips do not. So, that's a little bit of a letdown. I was kind of excited to see those and actually have them there to work with. And then, as I looked deeper, the pentac pentacles don't actually have the hexagram on the card, as far as I can tell. And then we come to the cups. And it is kind of a it's a it's a heart or a patched heart. If 
fixed heart and then the various cups pointing to different things. And I tried to look at this, you know, there are four chambers in the heart, um, anterior and posterior, ventricles and atrium, is that what they are? Don't quote me, I'm not a heart surgeon. Um, and then the, um, so you have the the heart for cups, that's a good association. You have this flame for wands. You have the swords for swords. And you have kind of this third eye kind of icon going on. And then you have pentacles and you have a mummy, basically, from the looks of it. So you have a mummy, which is earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I mean, we all end up there. And then we go to heart. We've got martini and a margarita glass cup. Three is additive. We add a, a white wine or champagne cup, glassware, and we add a goblety thing, and we add a Tom Collins glass, then we add a mug. It's all additive. Some have lines drawn in, others don't. Then we add a rocks glass. Then we add a flute. So we go from two connecting lines, two connecting lines, two connecting lines, three connecting lines at this point. Three connecting lines, four connecting lines on eight, or five connecting lines actually, because there's two off of the flute. Uh, I'm losing the I'm losing the pip love here. Um, what's additive? Am I missing one? Oh, a wine glass. And here we add a Bierstein at the bottom with so we have one two three four five six seven lines coming in out of ten and um, I don't get it I love the heart artwork um, I don't get the cup addition it's like they ran into a deadline and they had to go with it so I think they ran into a deadline there and had to go with it. Um, and the pentacles are better. I like the hand sketched feel to the pentacles. I like the mummy. I like the obscured background. And I was really excited when I saw the hexagrams. And then it let me down. And these are scratching finish wise. But they are fun. They are to be used. And, you know, this half the deck is phenomenal. I mean, look at that. These are fat hiccups. Let's see how they shuffle, which they shuffle very nicely. Thank you, thank you very much. There's nothing wrong with the card stock. So, all in all, a very good score. Um, I was just, I got my hopes worked up when I saw the hexagrams and I didn't realize until I was actually working through comparing the hexagrams to, um, 
Benabo wins uh, Eaching course book that um, not all the pips had hexagrams on them, so that was a letdown. But I, I set myself up for the letdown by not looking through it all first. These are shuffleable multiple ways. Judgment. Let's see what the book has to say on judgment. Okay, so the I Ching hexagram for this is 40 removing obstacles. Astrology, it says Jupiter and Uranus in harmonious connection to the sun or the sign of Aquarius as, liber as an expression of liberation and release. There is a very important step we are faced with. The liberation of our shadow self and the discovery of its true nature. This banner says Sersa Trova um, Search for Treasure? Search for Trove? I think it has something to do with search. Let's say, seek and ye shall find. So, circa trova, seek and ye shall find, search. Fabulous angel, fabulous angel. Pluto association here. And Page of Pence. Fabulous. Okay, I'm going to sign off and go play with my cards. This is Didi. Ciao for now.